So, um, hello everybody. Um, welcome to our latest uh, community hangout. Um, I think you've all been to one of these before with the exception of um, Tom. Um, Tom, I don't know whether you wanted to just introduce yourself to the group since it's your first time here. Uh, yeah, good afternoon guys. Um, I'm a product owner at Gladstone um, and uh, excited to get on board really. Um, so I think this is the best representation from Gladstone in this group at the moment. Great, um, thanks for joining us today, it's fantastic. So, um, agenda for today's call. Um, I've got some slides that I will share just to take us through the call today. Um, okay, so hopefully you can see those now. Um, so, uh, the main focus of today's discussion is going to be around um, the proposal that I shared uh, to the list last week around uh, creating a shared activity list. Um, I also wanted to spend a bit of time uh, and let Jade talk us through some of the data that's captured um, in the EMD system, um, just to, so we can compare that with um, what we have in the opportunity data spec at the moment, because um, I think it's relevant to some of the uh, discussions we are having about extending um, how to uh, describe events, so covering um, uh, some of the participation aspects, but also um, the disability and accessibility side of things, which we're going to co um, cover in a later call. So I wanted to uh, uh, cover that briefly, uh, and then anything else that anyone uh, wants to bring up um, uh, as kind of other business. Uh, and also, I'll recap what we're going to be focusing on for the next couple of calls, because um, from uh, from this stage on, we're we're going to be trying to. Um, focus the discussion at each of these around a particular area of, of the standards activity. So, um, yeah, so the, so the main focus today is around the activity list proposal. Um, hopefully you've all had a chance to see the short document um, I shared last week, but I'm just going to kind of step through the proposal at a, at a high level for those of you who uh, haven't had a chance to look at it yet or have only recently joined the group, um, just so you can get a sense of uh, what we're discussing. Um, I very much see this as a, a kind of straw man for you all to um, uh, comment on and improve um, so that we've got a uh, shared understanding of what we want to try and do around creating a standardized activity list. Um, I'll, uh, I've also done um, a, a very high level comparison of the couple of the more detailed lists that I've seen. So we'll, we'll spend a little bit of time looking at those um, later in the call as well. So um, starting with the, with the proposal, um, I think we had three broad requirements um, that there's a, a need for an openly licensed list of um, physical activities um, that anyone in the sector can access, use and share. Um, so from the feedback that we've, we've had so far, um, various platforms have got activity lists, but they're not widely shared. Um, some of the people that will be using opportunity data to create new apps and services could benefit from having access to a better structured list. So while in the opportunity data uh, specification, we've described um, how, to pub, how to structure those lists, we haven't actually got as far as uh, defining a standard list. So that's kind of what, what we'll be focusing on in today's discussion. Um, there's been a few comments on the calls around uh, how that list should be structured. Um, in the um, specification at the moment, we've, uh, we've um, described um, uh, hierarchical lists, um, and that reflects um, some of the ways that data is being structured at the moment. So I think we need to um, carry that forward into a standard list, um, but that is a, a topic for discussion I want to come back to. Um, and like everything that this uh, community group is doing, we need to make sure that the, uh, the list is developed on, in an open collaborative process. Um, so uh, what I'm uh, proposing is that um, this community group creates another output, so a deliverable from our activities, which will be um, the activity list. Um, and that will get published from um, under the uh, kind of open active website, 
um, accessible there alongside the other specifications that we've produced so far and that it will be published under a open license so the creative commons attribution 4.0 license so that means anyone who's using the list will need to attribute open active as the source of the data um, that's also compatible with the license, open license that we've been asking people to use when they're sharing their opportunity, opportunity data as well. Um, the list, I think it, it needs to be overseen by volunteers from the group. While I'm happy to do, um, you, know, the, you know, as chair to do the coordination work and to, um, to do the kind of authoring around um, the, the deliverable, um, I think I need some uh, uh, support in terms of kind of more expert opinions on the how the list should be structured, what the content should be. So um, what I'm what I suggested was that I had a, a couple of, we take a couple of volunteers from the group to help me uh, do the kind of editing and construction of the list. Um, that doesn't mean that anyone anyone else won't have an opportunity to contribute, but I just felt like having a uh, just a smaller group of two or three people just to oversee the list just to get it out into at least a first version that can be shared more widely um, would be a, a useful starting point. Um, again like the other outputs from the group the development of the activity list will be done in the open so we'll use all of the same infrastructure that we have so far so we use the mailing list um, we'll use GitHub to manage uh, any uh, issues and publish uh, the content. Um, we can use these Hangouts as a forum uh, for debating uh, aspects of the list if we need to, um, and using uh, Google Docs to, to support uh, collaborative editing. Um, so thinking of a few things around the, the process of how this list is going to fit into uh, the, the kind of standards landscape and the data that people are publishing. Um, I still feel that uh, we shouldn't be making any requirements that people must use the standard list. I see this is a list as a useful resource that people can start to use to incorporate into their platforms and applications if they choose, so that it allows independent adoption of um, the, the standards and other deliverables that we're producing uh, in that activity. I think it's, it's, I don't think we're in a position to kind of mandate that people need to start changing their platforms to, to accommodate a single list. Um, because I think in, in general, um, it, what we will produce will not necessarily cover everyone's use cases. So it'll need to be extended or revised for, for, for different purposes. Um, so I would uh, expect that, um, various data publishers will continue to uh, manage their own lists um, you know so I expect uh, Sport England, Sport Suite and people like Four Global will continue to want to maintain their own list um, but what we're creating is a new um, separate resource. Um, what we can do is create some mapping between those lists if it's useful so we can just make sure that if there's some slightly different wording or terminology being used across lists that we can still state that there is um, uh, some equivalences. So if somebody need, does need to map between data that's coming from systems that use different activity lists, then we've, we're kind of helping them do that uh, integration work. Um, so I've suggested that, um, that we should be creating a hierarchical list rather than just a flat list of activities. Um, there's, uh, we've had a few discussions about that uh, already and I think we should come back to it again in the call in, the, in a minute um, but some of the feedback I've had is that uh, a hierarchical list will actually be useful more useful for um, developers in driving um, discovery of opportunities um, because it, it offers more ways to drive recommendations and search indexing um, uh, around opportunity data but I, I recognize that there is a need to kind of uh, manage um, complexity here uh, be, be very easy to get into a very uh, complex list structure that might not be that um, easy for people to use um, and we could very quickly get caught up in debates around uh, how to structure that hierarchy so I think we might need to just look at keep using hierarchy to help us manage and organize the list but keep it relatively lightweight so maybe just limit the depth of, of the hierarchy 
Um, uh, and then kind of picking up on the point around um, uh, expectations that the list will need to be customized and extended, um, then we should be clear about um, what the mechanisms are uh, for doing that extension. So if a particular community wanted to extend the list to add more detail um, for their particular area of activity, then we should have some guidance around that, uh, the same as we have with the, uh, the core specification. Um, and also be clear about uh, what the process is uh, by which we'll be doing revisions to the activity list. Um, so how would somebody uh, come to the community group with a proposal um, that perhaps the hierarchy should be changed or, or updated, you know, whether there's new, um, new activities that should be added to the list or whether it would be better to change the hierarchy in, in some form. Um, I think, again, we probably need to kind of manage the overheads there. So perhaps think about uh, having a, um, say, three or six monthly uh, release cycle, maybe even an annual release cycle, just to um, let us do revisions at a kind of measured pace rather than um, continuing to change it um, you know, on a kind of month by month basis. So that, that's kind of broadly um, the proposal. I mean, in terms of uh, process, I think here it's we're pretty much um, following uh, what we've been doing over the last last few months. Um, so I just wanted to a pause here and you know, give you all a chance to, to give some feedback. Um, so on the process, on this question around hierarchy, um, and also some of the, um, be interested in your thoughts on some of the, uh, uh, some of the content that we could put into the list. So for example, some lists I've seen uh, include alternative spellings for activities, which is helpful for indexing. Should we be trying to do that in the standard list or not? Um, do we need to be worrying about creating definitions um, for everything that's on the list? Um, the, the lists I've seen so far don't have definitions, so it might be fine to proceed without it, but I wanted to flag that uh, as a potential discussion point. Uh, and then the last one is around um, uh, collections of activities. So both, so for example, both the Sport Suite and Sport England lists have lists of, of sports and physical activities, but they also group those in various ways. So for, to, to identify, say, uh, team sports or winter sports. So should we be trying to include that in our standard list or is that an area where um, we just leave it up to the community to define their own collections? So, so those are just some of the areas that I'd be keen to get feedback on. Um, uh, but I just kind of yeah, open it up to the rest of you to see what you think of that proposal so far. Does anyone start us off with comments? Anyone? Lee, can I yeah. pop it? I mean, we've got lots of experience of it, maintaining lists of this nature and no expertise in, in sports. and. I'd always call it an activity types list, as I've said to you before, because they're not actual activities, but that's semantics. And as long as everyone understands their types of activity. Um, can I just clarify from the way I've seen these represented in the spec? You're right, with their being identified by their preferred label, not by any kind of identifier. So is, is the intention to add an identifier to each item or to treat its preferred label as the way in which we identify each term? Um, with the, the way that they'll be published as JSON, JSON LD documents, they'll have your eyes for each of them. They'll have preference labels. I think in some of the examples that I put together, there were notations as well. So codes okay. for them. So if, if somebody say changes the preferred term, that will, it will be clear that that's the, that, you know, if somebody's historically referenced it in a data set, it will be clear what item they're talking about, although the label has changed over time. Because they'll be identified by, by a, an identifier as opposed to their labels, yeah. Yes, we, yeah, we can okay. make sure that stability there. Okay, yeah. I wasn't, I, I, and forgive me, I probably haven't looked in detail. The, the bit of the spec I saw, saw them identified by their label, but the JSON has an identifier, does it? Okay, um, regarding hierarchies, are we talking mono hierarchy or poly hierarchy? Um, so we've had uh, suggestions of 
both, but I haven't seen examples of that in practice. So where I've seen multi-parenting, I was going to say, um, you explain, is it worth explaining to the group what that means, uh, Lee? Or yeah, do you, Mike, do you want to give an example? Yeah, um, the only example I can think of is a bit fictitious. If water polo were considered to be both a water sport and an equestrian sport, it would fit under both headings, yeah. Um, and, and I think somebody in a previous hangout gave a more realistic example. Um, so it does create flexibility, but uh, that does start to cause uh, that there are other complications for a programmer using it. But, you know, so can one heading fit under two categories? So we have allowed for that, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. Yes, uh, um, a, a, uh, a real world case of that would, would actually be something like, for example, kickboxing, uh, which is classed as both a fitness activity and also a martial art. Um, so um, based on where you want to see it on the tree, you know, it, it would need to be in one or, one or the other or both. Uh, personally, my, my weight in on this uh, is that it, it either needs to be a flat list where you then have a, a tag based mechanism for you to if you to work out how how it's going to be organized or it needs to be needs to be poly hierarchical yeah yeah the hierarchies allow for you know look at a narrower set or look at a broader set you know we haven't got kickboxing but we've got boxing for instance um so, uh, so the, the only other thing i wanted to say lee was just that yeah i mean i think rules like that um it would be nice if they went in a sort of guidance document or a rules document that the editorial team's working to and maybe adds to over time because my experience is you forget these things six months in and then start to contravene what you've agreed <laughs> yeah okay that's, that's that's useful feedback yeah so we we do allow for the the, the poly hierarchy at the moment um, right. And both, both uh, this, that's what I was referring to as collections because that's what um, uh, Scores calls them as well. So in the in the examples from both Sport Suite and Sport England, um, where there are multiple parents, it's usually that there is a, the, what, I, what I'm thinking of as the kind of primary hierarchy of describing the activities, and then there are collections of sports or types of activities. So there's there's a slightly different. Okay, we just do it by assigning more than one broader term. But yeah, and, well, that's that's what I've done when I've mapped it to scores. But scores has a collection uh, mechanism that that captures that slightly different um, semantics. And um, Lee, so yeah. I just wanted to um, piece of feedback at a different point. Um, I think it's quite important at this stage that we've got consensus on what our end goal is in terms of the activity lists. Um, I think I emailed about it earlier in terms of um, if we're going to, if our end goal is to have every single possible activity, then this is a beast of a project and it's going to take us years. Um, just looking at the current activity lists and um, just from the, the fitness perspective, there's, there's a lot missing. Um, and I expect that, that having a look at some of the other sports that I know about, there, there probably is as well. Um, my my sort of personal opinion on this is the place to start is is the the top level or the um i can't remember what the terminology was that was used and um, we need we need to get that that top level agreed first and um, as a sort of phase one and then then look at what the, the the groups under that those top levels would be potentially as a phase two but um i think we just need consensus on on what depth that we're going to in that hierarchy yeah, that's that's a good point, and that but that's that's where I, I kind of I, I think I need some input from from the rest of you because you're you're dealing with this data on on a day to day basis. Where I, so I can help with the the structuring of the lists, but um, yeah, I don't know I don't know a good way to kind of bound that top top um, top set of concepts. Um, that's why I started to look at what um, what Sports Suite and Sport England were doing just to see what the common common aspects were of the the top. Uh, top concepts, but the, the, while there is some commonality, they're also they're quite divergent in places. Okay, yeah. So, my, I mean, I, it would be interesting to hear other people's thoughts, but my thoughts on that would be um, to start with, um, we get probably the, the, the two level hierarchy. Um, so, 
um, you, you're only going down as far as um, swimming, group fitness, um, football, um, and then anything else below that would be an extensive piece of work that you would need to collaborate with the owners of football, swimming, group exercise, whatever. Um, but it's getting those two top levels of, of hierarchy defined, which which would need to be the, the primary aim or goal. Hi, uh, so this is Kim from Sportsuite. Um, there's me and my colleague Becky here, and I'm of complete agreement. Um, we tried to do this a, a couple of years back. And um, as you can imagine, when we were rolling this out to our county sports partnerships, we had the same sort of debate and discussion with everybody that was involved about trying to put on the sports and physical activities. And like you said, it's a huge mammoth task to try and get all of those sports together. So what we actually did is we looked at Sport England's um, recognised sports. So they were the ones that we, we took the list from initially. And then as our county sports partnerships across the country started adding their own sports and physical activities that were happening on their patch, we added them to the list. So they were ones that were like the common ones, so to speak. We kind of put them all on. And, um, and the same as what you were just saying, it's only a two level. So you have a parent and a child and that's it. We kept it as a two level structure and then um, had tagging um, for if it was under particular groups. So so for example, if it's winter sports or Olympic sports, and that was very much because of the customer base that we were working with. So the clients we were working with do sometimes, you know, for count sports partnerships, need to be able to say, oh, look at these Olympic sports for a particular campaign. But it wasn't really anything broader than that. And it certainly needs a lot more um, adding to it with regards to fitness classes, um, because, uh, you know, county sports partnerships, although they do do some with fitness, it's very much working with national governing bodies and it's very sport heavy. Um, and so we don't have quite an extensive list on the activity side but I'm hoping someone could help us with that but I, I'm of complete agreement we keep it simple um, draw a line in the sand I was speaking to um, Nick Evans from ODI uh, at the CSPN convention just the other week about this that at some point like you said it can grow and grow and grow but we need to kind of put a draw a line in the sand say look this is a starting point and then um, as Lee said just keep adding to it every six months or what have you as we get those partners on board they'll understand what's what's greater and more required from each sport in, in greater depths that's how we'd see it anyway we're not precious over our list by the way it was just uh there's just our start of 10 so if anyone can add to it and amend it and by all means please feel free that's great thank you kim does anyone else want to offer anything sorry sorry that yeah nick, nick here i mean there's a couple of things i'll add it's one i kind of agree agree with Kim and Jade all that about keeping it simple to start off with. Um, I think we also need to be very careful about defining what we mean by sport and physical activity because how far do you go down particularly phys physical activity stuff uh, and we don't want to go into starting getting very much into detailed around any kind of NHS type rehab type definitions or anything like that um, and I think that's where the supporting documentation can be very clear about what we're doing. And I think the other danger around here is being very clear about how this links across to what we talked about the program stuff, because what we said here is what we're trying to do is simplify the list and not go down into the detailed names that the operators will keep rebranding everything in. So we need to make sure that that is clearly marked off as a separate bit in the documentation, because if you start to open this up, the danger is people then start, oh, I'll just add, oh, it's swim fit, I'll just add that on, and we get it. You'll just the list will proliferate. Um, <clears throat> in particular, I think that's around all those health and fitness kind of issues around that, which is kind of Jay sort of talked about because that list can go on and on. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I was saying that um, in some of the current lists, we've got like a, a mixture of programs and activities, so like Les Mills, Zumba, etc., from a fitness perspective, all programs. Um, I think that the strength for us would be defining the activities and then should we want to go to a, a phase two we can think about the responsibility of ownership of those subsets as well so do we want to take on the ownership of deciding what the football list is or is that where you enlist football to work with to decide on what their list is etc yeah i mean I, I kind of agree that i mean i think with football most of it will be all around their program names. If you talk to FA, it would be quite simple once you talk about how you're going to define it. It's the, it's the programs that they change for the different levels that change quite a lot, quite a lot, a lot on that. I think one of the other challenges is around, around the, 
is where do you draw the line, particularly with those programs, about program names or things that become almost become the activity synonymous with it. So the, the Zumba or the CrossFit, which are kind of branded things, but that's what consumer will search for. So how does that, where do you draw the line on the list about including those type of things? Yeah, I mean, that, that's where there needs to be some ongoing editorial oversight, I think, so that there's, you know, we regularly assess, you know, new candidate terms for promotion. Um, and a good way to do that would be to start looking at the data that's being shared, that has been tagged up as um, programs in the, in the open data. And we can use that as, as uh, um, potential suggestions for, um, for things that need to go into the main list, particularly if they've been commonly used. Um, any other comments from the group? Um, yeah, I was, I was I was interested in the um, as we're kind of we're talking about about making these lists um, such that they could be implemented in other people's systems, right? And and the, the, the level of detail in those lists. What what strikes me as interesting is that I'm just thinking about how that would be implemented um, if you've got a list, and it might be that this is the kind of high level list. And I'm imagining that that's a drop down in some of the kind of, you know, leisure management systems or some of the booking systems or whatever um, that you can you could choose which of those is, is, you know, is this a football session or is this a fitness session you know, from that drop down. Um, when we get into the level below that, that we're talking about drawing the line, um, are we going to uh, basically not everyone's going to want all that detail. And there's going to be levels of granularity that some people won't care about um, in some systems. They'll just say, well, you know what, we, we're, not, we're never going to get people filling this in or, or maybe it's it's too much information so um, I don't know is that are we cognizant about I suppose what's driving us to design the levels what is is the level one level what the user would expect to see in a list of activities if they were choosing or is it you know how we you know is it how we see ourselves funding you know for example the NGBs is an easy list of sports is that how the user would think about it you know, some NGBs cover more than one sport, um, and their user sees them as as different. So I, I just, I, was, I guess, I was interested in that how we're making those decisions. Well, I, I guess there's, there's, there's two there's two slightly different questions, there, isn't there? There's there's the um, the kind of implementation side of things. So how will the, how will you be use the the data to populate pick lists or to do search indexing the recommendations so is, is the right kind of structure and detail there and then separately around the the governance you know how, how you're defining the scope of sports for example so, there might be two, yeah. slight, two slightly different answers to those questions as well, well I, I guess i was just think you know if we're, if we're cognizant of those both of those things so for example in the first one um let's say there was a pick list in a booking system that some operator had some some receptionist somewhere or some whoever has to click through and and select an option now, obviously we're assuming that everything on that list is unique and obvious enough to be clear which one they're picking because if we're getting into detail between you know things on the list that aren't obvious different types of fiber side or whatever that don't have a clear definition and the definition isn't included in the list um, then we might end up with people not making good use of it. You see what I mean? So if we're, if we're not including a description, for example, like we talked about earlier, um, is we, we're, we're bounding how detailed we can get because at a certain point, there'll be stuff that just people just don't know what it is um, because it's so niche. Yeah, there's already things on the list that I'm not sure what they are. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Um, yeah, yeah, so I, t I take your point, yeah. Um, I, was say, I don't know if it helps, but um, any sports and physical activities that we've put on our system, they all do have a description. I just never sent them across to you, Lee. So we actually uh, okay. have a definition for every activity before it goes live. So if you need that, I can share it. Okay. Yes, that, that would be, it'd be very interesting to see that. Um, um, we've been very uh, generic in our descriptions and basic because obviously we didn't want to put anything that we have to constantly keep updating. So it doesn't go down to much specific. It's usually like a one or a two liner max just to sort of give a bit of an idea. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I can see that there'd be a lot of value in having descriptions, but I also, I also was also wary that they were also, it's, a, that it's more wording to debate. It's more things that we can have endless discussions around, you know, quite how we describe 
football. Or... But I don't think I don't think an operator is ever going to put on an activity they don't they can't provide. So it's either defined by the facility or it's defined by the classes that they run. So the, the top level they'll be looking for health and fitness. Then they'll be adding whatever program name, which we've talked about, will be the free test, whatever they want to call it, and then that will be pushed through into the booking system. So you'd always have the high level back behind it. So I, I, I can't see that being a problem for the operator. And in fact, it's a benefit because at least they then know when they want to suck, this is the full global thing, when they want to suck that data back out, they, they can easily analyze it. So you're pushing through the high level activity out into the, for people to use through the open data so they know what it is, and then with all the other detail behind it, so it then can be indexed. But they've got it very clearly, properly indexed in their own system so they can do their analysis on it. Yeah, okay. Okay. Sorry, go um, um, God, sorry, go ahead. Um, I was going to say, just in response to Nick, and this is weird because you're saying that. In terms of the, the it's, it's an interesting quandary because in terms of the, the user, I think that the lower level stuff um, and the real detail is going to be more that what they would be looking for. They'd be looking for the, the, the Zumba or the aqua spin class or the five or size football um, but if we're talking about starting with a higher level hierarchy from a user's perspective that will have less use it it will but it i think it's what nick just said in terms of enable people to to sort of organize their their own systems and their own reporting that's where the use to start with is, is going to lie rather than it being to the consumer. Yeah, I kind of, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I kind of agree, I agree with what you're saying, Jade. We'll cover that. I mean, it's again, I mean, what you could do is you, you, you go out and publish the high level list. And this is the first bit, but you have the other list against it, and you're basically saying, well, this is the bit we're starting with. This is the start of the on the other list, but we're really concentrating on this top list first. That might be the other way to do it. Yeah, I and think. Knowing... Sorry. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's a kind of this is the list we're trying to standardise, and here's the other helpful stuff that might be of help to you if you don't have these lists. Yeah, I mean, I I think you just yeah, and it might be that just the way that when we phrase it and we go out and publish it. We do it in two bits, saying this is the first bit, as you say, we really want to concentrate on getting this bit right. But here's some other stuff that we'll be working on. But this second list is going to take us longer to to agree on it because there'll be more work on it. But it's there, published in a kind of again in a kind of draft form. But it's going to take longer, kind of thing. So that sounds really okay. So um, a slightly uh, separate but I guess related question I had was in terms of release cycles, we talked about how quickly we can get this stuff out and changing. Um, so um, just uh, we talked about it being annual uh, as one option. I wonder if there's a, is there a way that we can make it, I don't know, maybe it's sufficiently high level that it doesn't need to be more regular than that. But I was just kind of wondering whether we can make it more frequent if we only allow additions or something, you know, um, but changes are made on an annual or breaking changes happen on an annual basis or something like that. Um, just because if we're evolving this, I'm just thinking about how quickly we can start to see this list actually implemented in systems because ultimately it's, it's the booking systems, right, that are going to need to actually implement this system. Uh, I know that some of the guys sitting here, are, you know, their backlogs are massive and they've got a million things going on and, you know, the chance of this actually being implemented as a field as a drop down list, you know, in the next two months is probably, a, there's probably a stretch there. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, what, maybe this is not, maybe it's a question for one of those, one of you guys uh, with, with systems. I mean, what, what does implementation look like? Were you sitting there thinking this is something for next year? We'll wait till you figure it out. <laughs> Um, okay, so from my point of view, I think it makes sense for you to have biannually or uh, or or yearly release cycle for this sort of data. Um, I I don't think it is a reasonable expectation to uh, expect uh, all of the leisure management system providers to to have to to have to integrate a new version of the list potentially every every week, every month, uh, you know, possibly all the way up to up to 
up to a single quarter. Um, so, you know, I think a half yearly update cycle would would probably be about right there. Um, but it it does lead us on to a little bit in terms of how we're going to version the list as well, because uh, it may well be that um, that you could have a have a you have a monthly release cycle, let's just say, for example, but you could then still allow people to reference earlier versions of, you know, of the list rather than always, always asking people to be on the latest version of the list. So if there's a way for you to version the list that they're referring to, then the release frequency is, is almost separated from that. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah, that, that kind of release cycle version policy needs to be part of the broader um, guidance and planning. Mm. Um, I also think that the release cycle for the top two levels of the hierarchy needs to be a lot less frequent than the bottom. So maybe you, you sort of, once you've got your standardized two lists, two, two, top two levels, that's sort of a concrete. You might change that in a in a year's time or two years time, if there's a major need to, but the bottom levels are the, is where the flexibility lives. Yeah. That makes sense. And I guess that, that when you say about versions, then if you were gonna in, introduce version two, which maybe uh, there would be a mapping that would come with version two from version one, so that you could migrate your data, almost like a migration that you could run over the data to move, move it to the new version. I don't know, I'm just throwing it out there. Yes, yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, so, one, so one thing I wanted to kind of put to you all is, is that, so we're not starting from a kind of completely blank slate. Um, we've got um, potentially uh, at least one, if not two lists that we could use as the seed for this activity. So I've been talking to Nick about um, Sport England publishing their activity list formally under an open license to make it open data. Um, uh, Kim, it'd be, it'd be it'd great if um, Sports Suite were able to do to do the same. I know that you've you've kind of shared this with with the group already, but it'd be it'd be great if we could um, uh, if you were willing to publish it under an open license. But what what we could do is we could choose one of the lists as the the basis um, that we work on. We could even just take one of those lists and say, okay, here's the first version. And you know, so we could just compare them on their relative merits as they stand today. Um, if there's particular areas where um, one list is weak and we can improve it based on data from the other one, then we can do that. So you know, we're not having. Sorry, that says Kim and Becky again. We're happy to start work on. Um, I mean, you've shared the Google Doc with us today, um, so we could have a little look over that. I and mean, we're happy to look at the comparisons and, and start putting together a full list. As I mentioned, obviously, ours is probably a bit more, bit more sporter heavy, so we might need somebody else's support to try and fill in the, the more physical activity, fitness size blanks, um, even down to the second level if we're staying at a top level, but you know, one level below, we might need a bit of support on that. But we're happy to help with the, the starting of that if, it, if it's of use. Yeah, I think I think that would be great. Um, the yeah, I mean, so the the comparison that I shared, I think at the moment, um, uh, let's see, Sport England's got three hundred and nineteen entries, uh, Sport Suite's got two hundred and forty. Um, there's a reasonable kind of overlap between them. Um, yeah, I mean, just linked to that, there is a few things, obviously, like um, there's some spelling errors that have made duplicates. And then there's also things, uh, different uses of words that we might have to try and determine. I know you mentioned about whether we use synonyms or something like that, because, for example, we have parkour in our list, but we have, um, you know, the synonym of free running. So then it came up saying that we didn't have free running, but we do, but it's just listed as a synonym of parkour. So there's a, there's a few things like that that probably need to also try and iron out as we, as we go through it. And things such as, you know, we have white water rafting, whereas there's wild water rafting on the other list. But then that also misses off black water rafting, you know. So again, it comes down to how, what kind of level of something you want to do and what kind of wording. But I don't know what, what the thoughts were on using synonyms. Should there be a column for that, or is that going to go into too far too complex? Or I don't know. Um, yeah, well, that that was one of the one of my questions. So we um, the the standard allows for um, synonyms, and within the conversion that I did for the Sport England list, I included the synonyms that they had there. So we could we could definitely include them. Um, you know, we could build that into 
um, the, the into the deliverable. So I, I, I feel that would be a useful thing to do. Um, okay, no worries. We can have a look at that because that might also be a bit of a reason why there's some, you know, differences. It's actually just different words that have been used, but you know, we can have a little look through that. We can at least start it and try and pull together the sports suite and the Sport England lists into into one kind of how everyone sort of said today if that helps and where possible we'll also drop in our um descriptions um that we have for some of the some of the activities um so then you can then decide whether or not that's overkill <laughs> and whether it's going to be too hard to determine what the wording should be used you can obviously just take or leave that however you see fit but i guess it's a start of a 10 anyway and then it'll need somebody else to really put their eye over it and and give it a good um shake and see what what sticks yeah, that, uh, that, uh, that sounds great. I mean, because it means then we're in the process, initially the process is just how do we merge these two already well-structured and well-tested lists? And then we think about how we maintain that going forward rather than trying to create a whole new list from scratch. Uh, uh, it means that I think we should be able to get to something that's more useful for everyone a bit, a bit quicker. Um, so um, in terms of the... The next. Really? Go on. Yeah. Uh, I think we also need to need to just make it clear uh, as to what we're going to do with uh, sports that have that have acronyms. So, like for example, MMA. Uh, that was that was on the one list as uh, mixed martial arts, and was on a on the sports suite one. I think it was as MMA, or it was vice versa. I think we also need to make it clear what's going to be the what's going to be the preferred name for sports where there is a, a known acronym for them as well. yeah okay yeah that's, that's another good point yeah i mean that, i think that's again we probably need some just some general kind of editorial guidance around you know whether we we might include synonyms but so include acronyms but as a synonym and we just make sure that the terms are fully spelled out you know in the in the hierarchy that kind of thing um if it helps or not that's exactly what we did we added the acronyms as synonyms it, it seems to work okay so far <laughs> Okay, so so in terms of the what I was thinking of as, as next steps, um, so um, as, as I mentioned, I was, I was wanted to ask both Sport England and Sport Suite to kind of publish their their existing list as open data. I don't know whether there's others um, that are in the sector that we might want to incorporate um, at some point, but. Um, starting by merging those two seems like a, a, a reasonable um, reasonable first step. Um, Is anyone in this group aware of any other lists that we should be considering? Or I'm just aware that the people that come today might have an idea. Only that we've got a comprehensive list um, that's up to date for group exercise, which covers all forms of exercise. So. That would be really great if we could get a copy of that, Jade. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah, from. Uh... Now, from our point of view, uh, all of our users uh, have 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 always tended to use the Sports England list as their as their basis. Um, so, you know, as long as that's one of the ones which we're using for a for a starting list, I I think we'll be you know off to a good start there. <clears throat> what I just say is. Um, on the spreadsheet which was which was sent out, Lee, uh, on the fourth tab for uh, for the really high level stuff. Uh, I don't think that we're going to need many more than that, to be honest, uh, as like the highest level thing. I, I'm fairly sure that if we merge those two lists together, that will be the a, a fairly static high level. Um, and then it will be the second level underneath that, which is the, which will then change most frequently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of overlap between here and some of it's just about um, different spelling. You know, um, winter versus winter sports, for example. So, the, okay. the only other thing was I mentioned about lists, as I said to you, is that there's some areas where we've never really, under the secondary stuff, really gone into detail. So, a lot of the motorsports, you know, we haven't gone into talking about off roading or into 
speedway or into all the different you know motocross or anything like that so there's a lot of stuff that we haven't defined under some of the sports right okay so it, it, i think as part of I, I doing that merging exercise we need to also identify where there are known areas where there's lack of coverage in the existing lists that we might need to go i might need to go out and get some additional input from particular communities um, can I also just check, um, I can't remember now because I only glanced at it earlier, but I think on one of the lists it also had like five-a-side football, 11-a-side football, and it broke it down by player numbers. I mean, are we really going down to that level as well? Or would it just be football? Obviously there's lots of different, yeah, there you go, 13-a-side, 15-a-side, 11-a-side, you know, what kind of level are you sort of talking about? Uh, I, I mean, I don't have a, have a strong, strong opinion there. Um, Nick, do, is there a reason those those numbers are included in the Sport England list? I think that's come from probably from part of the active lives because we were we were really looking at trying to understand, you know, who's doing who plays five side, who's playing the full game. So that might have been where it comes from. But that might be for one for more for for Jamie uh, in terms of kind of my local pitch work and whether that's. From their perspective around that's that's important below football yeah i think it very much is um they are very much kind of different uh sports um to a lot of people so um the way we tend to classify it is 11 aside nine aside eight aside seven aside and six side and five aside and those are different pitch sizes you have I, okay um, just to go back to the conversation we had earlier about the level of detail and um, the top levels of the hierarchy and the bits underneath. And I think this is like going into that in terms of that level of detail might be part of the, here's the extra stuff that we're kind of working on. This is the draft that we've got at the moment. Um, but but we, we, I think we should concentrate at the moment at the level above that. So just getting the definition of football and everything else that's alongside football. Um, and then the next the bits below a, a working progress. I think that'll certainly help us if we're, we're at least doing the first draft trying to pull that together because I know we were referring to football and rugby there but obviously there's variants on, on a lot of sports you know you have netball that's five aside and seven aside and then you also have um, volleyball which is five aside and three aside so it could it could then go across a lot of sports and make this list very very long um, so yeah maybe in the first instance if we could keep it as simple as possible and then like you said have people um, edit them and improve on them as we go along I think that might be the easiest way to do it yeah I think there's it's just that difference between the sport which is still football and, and then the format which is um, the smaller sides that's probably a good way to determine it, actually you just actually call that the format so it's, that's almost your next column across is almost in specifying all the formats which again I think might come in phase two yeah and no, I think I'd agree with that for sure okay that's great um, I think having, having a good a good definition a good test will help us keep on track okay I'm just making a note of that um, so all right so I've so I've done in terms of next step so um, it'd be useful to get the existing list under under an open license and then we've got then there's you know, raw materials that we can we can do this merging exercise around. Um, I, I, I've already shared with you all an initial comparison of the lists that I've had so far. Um, Jade, it'd be useful um, if, if you were able to share um, your list with the group as well, um, so I could feed that in, so we could just do another layer of comparison. Um, in terms of um, uh, getting some volunteers to help do this this merging exercise, so Jade Jade's already. Um, kindly volunteer to help out. Um, Kim, I might put you on the spot, but I think you've already offered to, to help out here. So um, can I um, maybe collaborate with um, you and Jade and perhaps Nick at Sport England um, to kind of pull together a first merge version? Yeah, I'll be myself and my colleague Becky um, as well. So we'll be looking at that together. Okay. So what, what I was going to propose to do is, is to set up um, some shared documents. So um, maybe a, a kind of better structured spreadsheet than um, than I shared before. Um, seed it with one of the the lists, and then um, we can start to, uh, to to merge in 
so I've probably seen it from Sport England as the larger list and then merge in um, entries from uh, the other lists um, as we go. So if I was to set up those shared documents, then um, we can start to collaborate on, uh, on it over the next, next few weeks. Does that sound reasonable? Uh, Lee, I would, uh, in, in, in terms of the, of the, phys the physical activities, uh, I would actually start the other way around, where I would seed it from the smaller list. Uh, otherwise, if you if you started from the from the larger list, then you'll get uh, all of the all the different formats uh, you know in there as as high level activities right right from the get go. Okay, so so you're voting for starting from the sports suite list. Okay, um, I mean what I personally liked about the sports suite list is the fact that it did have a, a top level high split between sports and physical activity, and then the detail below it. Um, which I thought was helpful. Okay. Okay. If it feels like we've got a kind of rough consensus on the on the on the process, we obviously need to put together some um, some editorial guidance and some scoping documentation. Um, but I'm I'm happy to kind of put something together and share that around to the group for comment. Does that sound okay for everyone? I'm, I'm seeing nods. So, okay, good. Um, we also do need to have uh, at least a, a note in there somewhere about versioning. Yes, yeah, I'll include that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we, we only have a few minutes left on the call, but I just wanted to um, give uh, Jade an opportunity just to talk through the document she shared with the list earlier. Um, I can uh, bring that up on my screen. Jay, are you happy just to talk us through this for five yeah. minutes or so? Yeah. Cool. Um, this was just dim follow up to the conversation we had on the last call around uh, need to and want to see um, in terms of the opportunity and data. Um, we did quite a lot of research and then um, off the back of that, we've created our new. Um, um, so there's a few different bits in here which could either go in the additional information um, guidance for, for people with the free text or um, in those um, those later bits um, on, on, on what we think is priority at the moment. Um, so one of the um, things um, that we've got in here is um, the, the owner, be it the organisation um, or an, an individual, um, is more information about that person. Um, so I think we've got, um, we had the, 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 the name in there before. Um, that's the top thing. Um, the next one down is actually the gender of that person. Um, because that could be um, important to the user. Um, a female might only want to go to a session that's been coached by female, for example. Um, below that is just all the address and geo stuff, um, local authority down to country. Um, then the next two are our categorization for activity and the type is the, is the hierarchy. Um, name of the class is already in the current spec. Um, I don't think I saw in the spec anywhere at the moment. Um, age. Um, age, and age max, um, which is quite important. Um, then contact details. I might have missed it, but did we have. I don't know if we have that in, in the spec yet in terms of who you would call or email. Um, you would need that for the organisation, um, for whoever the activity owner is. So that would be the, the contact would be number and email for the organisation or the individual teacher or coach or instructor. Um, frequency, re frequency and reoccurrence, I think, is covered in schedule from the event at the moment, as well as class day and um, organising body. That's just our definition of the org organisation and activity owner. Um, capacity of the class. Um, that could be important to a user. Um, some people might not be environment that's got 
30 people in it and they might want a smaller class or a smaller coaching session um, particularly if they're then looking at the cost cost effectiveness of if I'm paying 50 pounds and then five person people in the session for example um, the next one down is uh, just additional details and free type um, website address I think is in this text at the moment um, we have activity created date and I just left that in because conscious of people maintaining their websites and databases um, through open data people might want to I don't know that might be of interest to people in terms of how long they've had that piece of information in their systems uh, start time end time whether pre-booking is required is is important uh, the next session section is all about um, specialism um, the, the activity papers for which could we we do this as, as um just custom data tags um which could be very important for the user but also important for the uh, uh organizer and the person or the organization sorry the activity owner and in and to enable them to market themselves or market their cars or their product Jade, this list, is this just a list that you compiled yourselves or does it come from a particular source? Um, that has, that, that's come out of our data. Um, okay. So we, we compiled it off the back of what we already had in our, in our system. But this, would, this, this is what's come from our group exercise data, so there obviously could be other things. So. Okay, thank you. Um, the level of the activity, again, that's that set for group exercise and there may need to be another subset for skill level because that's fitness level for other activities. Um, disabilities conditions and um, that list is we um, we consulted with interactive on that and that was their recommendation in terms of the level of detail we go to and um, with the box underneath for additional information and um, that can be added on any more down under each of the categories. Uh, accessible for wheelchair users. Um, it's quite self-explanatory. Clothing footwear requirements. Again, this, that, that was based on um, group exercise. Um, equipment requirements. Um, parking available. Costs for load. Uh, I don't know. And payments, payment methods. Yep. And so, I mean, yeah, in some way, this is all stuff that the consumer is going to want to know um, about going to that. Um, that's it. Great, thank you. Um, it, it's, it's useful to, to see that. Is it, it on several levels? It's useful um, because it's good validation of what coverage we've got in the in the spec as it is. Um, though, as, you, as you pointed out, there's a few areas where um, we haven't yet uh, added um, support. So things like um, capacity, pricing, some of the disability stuff is kind of known areas that we've yet to get to. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's very useful to see what you're doing in practice. Um, and it'd be useful to get equivalent um, input from, from other people. Uh, here on the call so if you're able to share you know a similar breakdown it would help us just do some extra validation of the spec as it stands um, and help us kind of move forward with with um, known areas for further work um, okay. yeah so we so, have something similar but as is um it's a little bit different but i think it's because our systems are slightly different so would, would you be looking at something going forward then as everybody having the same fields that they ask is is that the aim um, well, not not necessarily in your in your platform, although you might get some convergence over time. So what what we're trying to do, make to do is make sure that when you exchange that data with somebody else, so when you publish it openly, we at least structure it in a common way, and we're using the same fields for the same types of information. Um, how it actually gets presented to a user in terms of user interface on your side is obviously up to to use a kind of system design. Um, but seeing if, if, if it's obvious to people that there is um, 
it's useful to collect certain types of information that I would expect people to start to feed that into their, you know, their, their system. Yeah, so because we had a, a, a slight thing because obviously there's quite a lot of questions there, which it could be a barrier, not necessarily as a barrier, but could be somewhat off put in. And so ours was broken down a little bit different. So users would actually sign up and then complete the sort of the first half of that form about themselves as like a user profile. And then when they then went to add up opportunities, then you add the you answer the sort of almost the second part of that form as every you know each time you added a different activity. So it's not like you're filling the whole lot in each time you went to the you know onto the website so um and then linked to that the facilities again um so a, a user can create an organization which will appear in our database so our activity finder isn't just activities it's also got a club database element to it and a facilities database so anything about the actual facilities so you know what turf what facilities are actually based there that's also then collected and, and held separately it's just to make it a shorter process really for a, a user to do they don't do everything in one long list they do it in different bits as and when they're adding on either an activity or they're adding on an organization or a club that they're affiliated with to try and um, reduce those barriers but that does mean that yes yeah, so we obviously we collect and present it slightly differently so we might still have the same questions but in a different way um so i just wasn't sure how we cross reference or whether we should all be looking to have similar questions or whether that wouldn't matter too much yeah i think there's, there's room for everyone to kind of innovate and uh, and create the kind of user interface user experience that they need within their platforms it's just knowing that we can be re reliably map between what you're collecting you know whether it's one big form or um you know, pulling from separate bits of your system to being able to pull that out in a consistent way um, okay, cool, thanks. Yeah. Can I just uh, ask um, so, uh, Tom and Paul, sorry to pick on you guys, are you all uh, in here? We've got um, Gladstone and Legend represented on the call today. And I just know you've been listening intently to all of this and, and I'm just really interested in your, in your thoughts on, the, on what we've been talking about. Is that something, I mean, are these the number of fields we just went through and activity lists, is that something that I know it's, that's a little bit more than is currently captured within these systems? Um, what do you think? Um, can you hear me? Yep. That's yep. Yep. Brilliant. Okay, that's the first question. Uh, fields and content of fields, I don't think it's too much a phase for uh, us as a software provider. Uh, I think what I've, I've been scribbling down is just what this means to the provider and maintaining all this data. Because you've got uh, a sort of marketing list. What is it that we're putting to the consumer to pick from? I want football. You've got those who return to Sports England, those who return to other bodies. Uh, and I'm just getting a slight worry that they're going to be receiving a single list, but will it fulfill all of those criteria? Because they, the provider will not want to maintain lots of, lots of items against a single activity that they do. So for the software, I'm, I don't think any software provider will be that phased by the amount of data that's in there. It's the maintenance of the data, I think, is the biggest headache there. And I'll, I'll jump in off the back of that. Um, um, tend to tend to agree with Paul. Really, it's the, the fields is, is not too much of a worry. Um, I think for for me, it's providers are going to want to maybe categorise these things into their groups, but still keep the very detailed level um, that we've just talked about as maybe being phase two or later phase um, that are very specific to them. So I think it's almost a using this to categorize so that um, it's easier to find these things and make it more open. Um, but I think from a provider point of view, it's almost feels like just adding these in as extras as opposed to um, tying this integral, integrally into things. Um, and, and then that's just the back down to the keeping it up to date and, um, and maintaining it really. Yeah, it sounds it's interesting because obviously when you're it's a different situation if you've got an individual instructor updating their own list but if you've got a provider such as a leisure operator who has got a shed load of stuff um that they've got to keep up to date that's obviously a little bit more of a task um in terms of those those fields so i guess it's optionality is important and, and i think it's safe to say that there's always restrictions in, in software and people use things like descriptions and categorizing things to, to work around things. So they might do um, squash court, um, glass, glass walls, 
squash court painted walls type thing and ultimately they want to expose that to the customers because that's customers that want to choose that level um now that's serving a completely different purpose than the, the data we've just talked about now um but generally from a system point of view it's in a very similar area Right. Uh, thank you both. Um, we're, we're coming to the end of our time, so I'm, I'm going to kind of uh, wrap things up. Um, so, in, so in, in terms of next steps, then I'll, I'll, I'll put together some um, working documents that uh, we can collaborate on around the activity list. Um, the I just wanted to give everyone a, a reminder that um, that just looking for any other uh, feedback um, on the existing um, uh, specifications uh, and also for the primer document that um, I shared I think a couple of weeks ago. Um, so for those of you who have just started to um, implement um, against the spec, uh, any feedback you have uh, would be greatly appreciated. Um, if you've had to, any of you have had time to look over the primer, um, I guess, I, I'm, again, I'm probably uh, thinking about those of you um, doing the technical work here, if there are particular questions um, that you have that aren't being addressed by the primer so far, then let me know so I can do some uh, improvements and revisions to it. Um, in terms of uh, what, what we're going to be doing at the next few Hangouts, um, we're, going to, we're going to carry on and have, try and have uh, a focus for the next few discussions and a few areas. So on our next call, which is on the 26th of April, um, we're, going to, we're going to primarily focus on starting to gather some requirements around um, booking and event attendance. So by that, I'm, I, I think we should be looking at everything from um, some of the things that Jade was just mentioning. So kind of clothing and equipment through to pricing, uh, how you go, where, you know, what the entry point is into the book, booking process, that kind of thing. So if you've got um, uh, thoughts on that, then it'd be good to share them ahead of during that discussion. Um, on the 10th of May uh, we're going to have a focused discussion around um, uh, disabled participation and accessibility events. So again Jay just uh, has provided some useful input there because um, we want to make sure oh, that's a, an area of the specification we want to make sure that we've we've addressed properly. Um, so building on the kind of good advice that you've all had so far um, uh, is going to be great. Um, I haven't yet identified the topic for 24th of May um, that might be a good opportunity for us to do a kind of check-in on this process of creating the activity list um, if we haven't got, had a chance to do so before. Um, but I'm also open for um, if, if people have, uh, have got suggestions for particular topics, or if there's bigger area of the specification that we feel needs um, further work or attention, um, then let me know and we can uh, schedule a discussion around that in the future. Um, I was just going to ask, is that in terms of next uh, hangout coming up. Um, is the next one um, going to cover facilities specifically? I was having a, a conversation with Jamie earlier in the week and thought it'd be good to just uh, mention that here. We've um, in, in various other conversations um, in terms of looking to open up data, um, facilities has come up a few times um, and um, I think it, it actually came up as well with, um, with Tom when we were talking that through uh, and also with, with Raymond separately. So I'm just interested, uh, are we going to cover the facility availability and those resources and that, that kind of questions around that as part of that call or is that a separate conversation just to scope that? Um, I, I think it'd be useful to inc incorporate them there. Um, you know, we've got some support for describing facilities in the specification, but not necessarily, you know, their current availability. So I think we should put that into the call on the 20, on the 26th. Um, I'm, I'm, I think that call is, is largely going to be around capturing requirements. So just knowing what, um, what we need to add to the specification to start to move it forward and supporting that booking workflow um, is kind of where I want to start. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so is there anything else that anyone wants to uh, raise with the group before we, we sign off for today? Just give me a wave. No. Stu sends his apologies. He uh, has some stuff to say, but unfortunately, this is another call. So uh, he's going to share with the group on uh, <laughs> uh, on the, the public mailing list.
Yes, I, okay, but yeah, please do, Stu. Um, yeah, so, you know, as always, we have these fortnightly check-ins, but useful to keep the discussion going in between on the mailing list. Um, so, yeah, th thanks uh, for all of you for your comments and uh, input today. Um, as ever, it's, it's really useful. Um, uh, I think we've got uh, a good sense of what we need to do next, um, particularly around the activity lists. Um, for those of you who are watching the recording on YouTube, I know a few people, a few people have been doing that, then please chip in um, on the, the mailing list uh, uh, or please uh, come along to the next call. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm going to wrap up there. So thanks, everyone, uh, and I'll speak to you all again in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Lee. Oh, brilliant. Bye. Cheers. Cheers, everyone.